Hey guys, it's Dr. Alicia here from She Found Health. Today we're going to talk about the top three reasons not to go to the hospital when you think you're in labor. So these are applicable at term, so 37 weeks to 41 and a half weeks. If you're earlier than this or later than this, obviously talk to your care provider, but these are three pretty typical reasons that we would get phone calls or pregnant people would come into the hospital and to get assessed because they're worried about something. So I thought I'd chat about those top three reasons and um, go over what each of them are and what they could mean. So if you're pregnant, planning for pregnancy, if you've just delivered and have a newborn at home, make sure to subscri subscribe to our channel. We've got tons of great videos and are coming out with new videos every week. Also, you can check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. If you need a birth plan template or a postpartum checklist, I'll put those in the show notes below. Check out free downloads that you can get for both of those things. And also make sure to read the medical disclaimer below in the show notes. Okay, let's get started. The first and most common reason women call us or come into the hospital is their mucus plug. Um, the mucus plug is very normal it's very typical and what does it mean it means you might deliver in the next month or so it doesn't mean anything worrisome and it doesn't mean that you're going to go into labor anytime soon necessarily so let's talk a little bit about what it is what it looks like and what do we need to do about it so first of all our cervix we'll use my hand for an example is generally in pregnancy three to four centimeters long it's tough like our nose and it's closed. It should be closed for most of your pregnancy. During labor or when your body's starting to prepare for labor, that cervix can start to shorten and it can start to dilate out a little bit and your cervix becomes softer, more like your cheek. So there's a mucus plug that's in your cervix throughout your pregnancy. Its role is to help protect the normal bacteria that sit in all of our vaginas from going up into your uterus because when they're up in your uterus, they can cause infections. So the purpose of the mucus plug is to prevent that bacteria from going up. Now, as your cervix is starting to prepare for labor, which can happen, you know, anytime after 35 or 36 weeks, um, those changes can release the mucus plug. What does the mucus plug look like? Well, women describe it many different ways and it can look different in everybody. Some women don't even notice losing a mucus plug at all and that is totally fine. Um, some women describe it as um, like thick, snotty-like material. It can be clear, it can be yellow or brown, um, and it can also have some specks of blood in it, which is totally normal. When our cervix starts to change, so starts to thin out and it starts to dilate, there's these tiny little blood vessels in our cervix that can get broken. They're not near your baby, it's not dangerous at all, but they can cause a little bit of bleeding. So you'll often notice if you ever have like a cervical sweep um, by your doctor or midwife, then you'll have a little bit of spotting after that, the exact same reason. So the other way some people describe it is like um, egg whites. So if you pull egg whites out of a container, they're kind of goopy and they, they sit to your finger and they still stay attached. Some people describe it as that. What does a mucus plug not look like? It is generally not thin, watery uh, fluid. So if you are wondering, oh, this mucus doesn't seem very goopy, it's really thin, it's really watery, um, that actually might be your water breaking or your membranes breaking. So if you have thin, watery fluid, especially if it's kind of continually leaking every time you sit up or stand up, you kind of leak a little bit, please make sure to talk to your care provider and get checked out because we don't want to miss a uh, rupture of membranes, assuming it's a mucus plug. So that is mucus plug. The next reason women come into labor delivery or give us a shout are Braxton Hicks contractions. So some women get Braxton Hicks contractions, some pregnant people don't. Everybody's very different. In my first pregnancy, I barely got them. In my second pregnancy, I got them from about 25 weeks on. Braxton Hicks contractions are generally not painful. They're tightenings of your uterus. So that uterus is a huge muscle and it tightens up. Um, so they're tightenings and you can feel them getting tight. Sometimes it kind of stops you from breathing a little bit or gives you a little bit of a hitch. Um, oftentimes it'll happen when you're more active. So if you're going out for a long walk or you're like me, rounding on all the people postpartum and delivering babies and you're more active, um, then your uterus can get tight. 
um, that should not be painful and they should not be regular. So if you're having any regularity, even if they're not super painful and despite sitting down and resting, they're not going away, especially if you're preterm, so below 37 weeks, please call your care provider. But if you're just getting them here and there and you sit down and they go away when you rest, most likely it's just Braxton Hicks, but it's pretty amazing how firm your uterus can feel when you are having them. Another thing that's similar to Braxton Hicks is kind of early labor. So these might be, you know, contractions that are a little bit more uncomfortable. So more than just a Braxton Hicks, you might feel a menstrually light cramp um, down low and they might kind of be happening irregularly. Again, that's not labor. That's just kind of your uterus starting to prepare. If your term, 37 weeks and above, then you don't need to let us know about that unless you're planning to have a cesarean section and you're starting to get this more consistently or they're going on for a long time. If you are having any regularity to your contractions, so they're happening every two to five minutes and they've been happening like that for an hour or so and they're getting more intense, well, that might be labor starting. So that we wanna know about. But certainly if they're just still irregular, they come and go, they're not consistent, they're not super painful and your term, then we don't need to hear about that. That's just your body starting to think about getting into labor at some point. And that can come and go over weeks. So you may have those kind of periods that you get kind of these inconsistent, uncomfortable, menstrual-like cramping for an hour or two, and then they go away. And then they come back two days later, and then they go away. And then five hours later, they come back. So it can be very frustrating because you're always getting excited about the potential of going to labor, and then they kind of stop. Very typical and very normal. The third thing that we often hear about from women is that sensation of baby dropping. Again, this does not happen in every pregnancy and it's very variable when women get that sensation. But at some point, as you're getting closer to term, 35, 36, 38, 40 weeks, um, your baby nestles down into your pelvis more. So during pregnancy, they grow, 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 and they put a lot of pressure up on your diaphragm, pushing up, you get short of breath, you can't, you don't feel like you can get a big breath. Often you have, get a lot of discomfort up in your, especially in your right upper side, you can get kind of rib pain and numbness, all very normal. It's all that stretching from baby putting pressure up there. Um, and then at some point, baby will settle into your pelvis. So they will shift their head and get down and engaged into your pelvis. And this often, takes a lot of that pressure off so women can breathe again, they get this burst of energy, that's often when they get into that nesting phase and they've got all this energy to get things ready around the house. That's totally normal. The other thing, as you can imagine, people feel with that is when baby drops into their pelvis, they feel a lot more pelvic pressure. So they often have to pee a little bit more frequently. Now, if that's abnormal for you or it's painful when you're peeing, we wanna make sure you don't have a little bladder infection. So certainly let us know if you're having those sensations and they're abnormal for you. You can also get kind of more discomfort and get that waddling walking sensation. So just with baby solo in your pelvis, you can feel like kind of constant pressure there. Um, and you can get that kind of more pelvic pain or just not able to walk as you normally would. Those are very normal sensations. So that's from your baby dropping into your pelvis, which again, some happens to some women doesn't happen to others or sometimes it'll only happen right before you go into labor so those are kind of the top three reasons not to go to the hospital those are the kind of the reasons that we often hear from people who are pregnant close to the end and we totally get it you're excited you want this to happen you want to get going and you don't really know what to expect that's totally normal if you're really worried about something please call your care provider that's why we're here but if you've lost your mucus plug Great, that's wonderful. We don't need to see it. We don't really need to hear about it. That's just one of those normal things kind of coming up to the end of your pregnancy. You'll probably go into labor in the next month or so. If you're having those kind of irregular, not really painful Braxton Hicks that go away with rest, we're not too worried about those either. They can be very normal. If you start to get more consistent contractions, if they're getting more painful or more regular, please let us know, especially if you're early, so less than 37 weeks. And if you're having increased pelvic pressure, um, again, if your term, very normal, very typical. But if you're not noticing some urinary symptoms, so peeing more frequently or discomfort when you're peeing, let's just make sure you don't have a little bladder infection. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. If you like this kind of info, please subscribe below. Also check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca. Take care, have a great day.